Hello and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Gabriel Prada and here is a quick lecture about long ultrasound for pleural effusion. For optimal image acquisition of pleural effusion, patients must be on a semi-sitting position with the head of the bed elevated to 30 to 45 degrees. This in order to have the fluid accumulate above the diaphragm over the posterior costophrenic angle, which is where we can see it better with ultrasound. We must use the face array probe. And for protocol selection, we will focus on scanning over zone 2, which is located over the lateral chest at the level of the diaphragm, from the 7th to the 9th intercostal spaces between the mid and posterior axillary line. And for picture optimization, we must start scanning lower, at around the 10th intercostal space, and then slide cephalat until you see the diaphragm. Then, we can tilt or fan our probe such that you direct the ultrasound beam towards the patient's back over tibra, thus scanning over the posterior area of the costophrenic angle where pleural fluid will accumulate. Now, what do we look for when suspecting pleural effusion? Well, of course we look for the effusion itself. This looks like a dark or anechoic but well-demarcated space immediately above the diaphragm, but we also look for the presence of spine sign and the absence of curtain sign. Let's see how these findings actually look. This is a 2D image of a zone 2 of a patient without pleural effusion. We see all the relevant structures labeled. However, what's important here is what we do not see. We don't see pleural effusion above the diaphragm, only the black shadow of a normal air field lung. Another thing that we do not see is the vertebra bodies above the level of the diaphragm, right? We see the black shadow of the vertebra bodies below the level of the diaphragm immediately posterior to the liver, spleen, and kidneys, but we do not see them above the level of the diaphragm, mainly because the black shadow of the lung prevents us from seeing them. Of course they're there, we just can't see them. Now see the image on the right. Here we have a nice pleural effusion. The effusion is this dark, well-demarcated area just above the diaphragm that is surrounding the lung tissue. This lung is no longer a black shadow because it is not filled with air anymore. Instead, it looks sort of gray and white because it has been compressed by the effusion. This is an atelectatic lung. And what about the vertebra bodies above the diaphragm level that we cannot see on the normal image on the left? Now look at the image on the right. Do you see the vertebra bodies? Yes, these are the vertebra bodies, these black shadows. This is the spine sign. When we see the vertebra bodies above the level of the diaphragm, and this happens because there is an effusion that allows the ultrasound waves to travel through and hit the vertebra bodies and come back to the probe. The spine sign strongly suggests pleural effusion. What about the curtain sign? Well, remember from the lecture about normal long ultrasound exam, the presence of curtain sign indicates the absence of pleural effusion, which is what we see on the left, a normal healthy curtain sign. Now see on the right, what happens when you have a pleural effusion? There is no curtain sign. No matter how deep the patient inhales, the effusion will always be there between the lung and the diaphragm, separating both. Absence of curtain sign tells you that what you're seeing is likely a pleural effusion. Thank you for watching. Make sure you check out our website and YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and share.